I said that they're, they're going to, they need to talk to Zim. I think they picked the right guy. Mm. I think they got the right guy. And I think Zimmer runs a very sound scheme, a scheme you can explain, a scheme that has answers for just about everything. The Dallas Cowboys have done something finally in NFL free agency. Signing Eric Kendricks. I like that move. I like this move from the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys trade down, they pass on Graham Barton, and they get an athletic tackle, Pete, and Tyler Guyton out of Oklahoma. I think this is a good, smart pick by the Cowboys. You get another offensive lineman to add to the mix. You know, you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into the Dallas Cowboys at this point, because while I know a lot of people have talked trash about their offseason, I actually think they've done a lot of good things that have made this team better, and it set them up to have a better future. They went out and filled a lot of needs that they had coming into this offseason and I'm gonna tell you right now if these guys that they added come in and play to the level that we all think they're going to this Cowboys team is once again going to be a contender in the NFC with a chance to go as far as anybody else but before we get into why I believe that if you like Dallas Cowboys content just like this make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Cowboys videos for the remainder of this offseason Okay, so to get back on topic with the Dallas Cowboys, this team, of course, is coming off a season where they finished 12-5, and having 12 wins for the third time in a row, which is something you don't see done very often. This shows me that this team is really, really talented, and they have a lot on this roster that should be able to get them over the hump. They just haven't been able to do it yet, so they needed to come into this offseason and fill a few holes that they wanted to be able to do that next year, and I think that's exactly what they've done. The biggest need coming into this offseason, as far as the offense goes, was most definitely Definitely the offensive line, especially since you let Tyrone Smith walk and you let Tyler Biadash walk. This left you with huge holes at the tackle position and at the center position. So the Cowboys needed to find a way to fill these holes, whether it was through free agency or through the draft, and they found a way to get it done in this draft. The first guy they took, of course, was in the first round where they traded down to pick 29 to get that guy, Tyler Guyton, out of Oklahoma, who has all the potential in the world to be elite. This is a guy who, yes, he is raw and he's going to need some work, but the Cowboys are known as one of the best organizations in all of football at developing offensive linemen, so I like their decision to go with this pick a lot. Now, what I love about this draft is that they didn't just stop here. They also, in the third round with pick 73, were able to take Cooper BB out of Kansas State, who was one of the best centers in this entire draft class, which fills the other huge hole they had on the offensive line. Cooper BB is a guy that should not have fallen this far, considering how good of a player he was in college, and I expect him to transfer what he was able to do in college over to the NFL pretty easily. This is going to make the interior of the offensive line so much better considering you have Tyler Smith and Zach Martin at each guard spot, and that should allow the Cowboys to be able to run the ball a lot more effectively. We know the Cowboys had extreme struggles last year running the football, and a big reason for that was the center just getting pushed back off the ball right off the snap. So to bring in a guy that should be able to get a push up front should allow Zeke and the other running backs to be able to get some yardage behind them. And if that truly is the case, this offense is going to be so much better because of it because you're not going to have to rely just on Dak Prescott to carry the entire team. Last season, we saw the Cowboys put Dak in so many bad positions by not being able to run the ball, which is eventually going to lead to a downfall if he has one bad game. So to be able to add a great tackle and a great interior offensive lineman is going to make this team a lot better as a unit. And when you combine that with a passing attack that's still going to be really good, this offense is going to be a top 10 unit in football once again. You have CeeDee Lamb, who absolutely broke out last year as one of the best receivers in the NFL, probably one of the best three receivers in the NFL, and I only expect him to continue to get better. And then to pair with him, you're going to have Brandon Cooks coming into his second season in this system, and I also expect him to get a lot better. Brandon Cooks obviously was a bit of a disappointment last year, only putting up a little bit over 600 receiving yards, but I'm going to blame that on Mike McCarthy not really knowing how to use him in the correct way, so I expect Brandon Cooks to have a lot more production in his second season here, and if he does, it's going to open up up this passing game even more. Now, as your third option at receiver, I think it's pretty obvious that it has to be Jalen Tolbert, and it's time for this guy to have a breakout season, and I expect him to, considering what we saw him do last year. Last season, I think he should have gotten a lot more snaps, because I feel like every time he was on the field, he found ways to make plays, and I think it was pretty obvious that he was a ton better than Michael Gallup, so I'm actually pretty confident in this guy being our third option at receiver going into his third season. 
But as we all know, you don't just need an offense if you want to win football games. You also got to have a defense, and that was another big struggle the Cowboys had last year, and we saw that show up big time in the playoffs. The Cowboys obviously had no answer for what the Green Bay Packers wanted to do, and I'm mainly just going to blame that on Dan Quinn being outdated as a defensive coordinator. I think Dan Quinn is pretty good, especially against bad football teams where our pass rush would just dominate them, but when we actually played smart coordinators like Kyle Shanahan or Matt LaFleur, we actually absolutely got cooked because they knew how to manipulate what Dan Quinn wanted to do. So the biggest thing we did for this defense was definitely adding Mike Zimmer, who I think is going to be a lot more modernized in what he brings to the table, and he's actually going to be able to slow down these super in-depth play callers. We're going to have to find a way to get through the Packers or the 49ers, so we needed a different defensive coordinator that could do that, and I think Mike Zimmer has what it takes, especially with what is on this roster. To start, the first thing you notice is this defensive line that is just absolutely insane with Micah Parsons on one side and Demarcus Lawrence on the other side. Micah is only going to continue to get better and he is literally unblockable against the majority of the tackles in the NFL. And he's about due for a Defensive Player of the Year award, so I'm ready to see what he's able to do going into his fourth year. Now, Demarcus Lawrence, on the other hand, he has slowed down as a pass rusher some as he's gotten older, but he's still a solid pass rusher and he's extremely good as a run defender, and that pairs greatly with Micah Parsons. But what's great about this defensive line is you don't just have great starters, you also have great depth pieces because you have Sam Williams as an edge who still has all the potential in the world to be great and you went out and drafted Marshawn Neeland in the second round who's another guy who I think is pretty similar to Demarcus Lawrence. He's not an insane pass rusher but he definitely has the upside to be one but at the minimum he's going to come in and be a great run defender which should help out Mike Zimmer's scheme a lot. Now as far as the interior goes we did lose Jonathan Hankins which sucks but we do still have Osa Odigizua who also played really good on the interior last year not only in the pass rush, but also as a run defender, which helps round out this defensive line and really make it complete. But even with Osa being so good and with these edge rushers being so good, you still have a question mark at the other interior defensive line position in Mozzie Smith because he didn't play like we thought he was going to in his first season. Now, I will say most interior defensive linemen take two or three years to develop, so maybe that's just what's happening with Mozzie, and if that's the case, this defensive line is just going to be absolutely unstoppable, not only against the run, but also against the pass. And when you combine with that a linebacker room that I'm actually extremely confident in after what the Cowboys have added to it, this front seven as a whole starts to look really, really scary. The biggest addition, of course, was adding the veteran Eric Kendricks, who's going to be the lead linebacker in this room, and he's going to do a great job at it. And then to pair with him, you have a bunch of different guys that I think are going to be extremely competent as well, considering you have Demarion Overshawn coming off an injury, you still have Damone Clark, who has potential, and you drafted Maurice Luafu out of Notre Dame, who plays with his absolute hair on on fire. So, like I said, I love what this front seven has, and when you pair that with a secondary that's fully healthy now, this defense should easily be one of the best in the league. You have Deron Bland, who absolutely broke out last year and beat the pick six record. You have Trayvon Diggs, your cornerback one, coming back from his injury. You have Jordan Lewis, who I actually think played a little bit better than people give him credit last year. And in the fifth round, you went out and got an absolute steal in Kalen Carson out of Wake Forest. I really do think this guy is talented enough to take over Jordan Lewis's spot in that nickel position, and if he comes in and plays as good as I think he's going to, this corner room is going to be extremely, extremely good because you have three solid corners that can guard whoever is in front of them. Now, as far as safety goes, I also love what you have here because you have Malik Cooker, who I would consider elite. You have Donovan Wilson coming back, who I like a decent amount, and you also have Yonway Thomas and Marquise Bell, who are young guys that have a ton of potential to be really, really good, and I think we're going to see those guys mixed in a ton. And when you have all of this depth on a defense, at every single position. You can rotate guys in and out and use guys at what they're better at, and that's going to allow Mike Zimmer to be super creative in what he does. And when you pair that with an offense that I already mentioned is going to be a top 10 unit in the league pretty easily, this team is going to be, like I said earlier on in the video, a contender that controls their own destiny going forward.